Hello and welcome to this session. In today's session, we are going to understand how to use a Google's uh, speech recognition module to effectively understand speech and then use it for any purpose that you deem fit. In this particular example, what we have done is that we are implementing the search functionality of an e-commerce application. So just to give you a reference, this is the tab that we are looking at. This is a search tab. So we have a search view here where the user can enter the text and we have a list view here where the test uh, where the search results will be displayed. There are also two buttons here which we have uh, given a facility for the user to use. So one of them is uh, to uh, to identify barcodes. So basically if you click on this button it will uh, work call another window through which you can uh, scan a barcode and the barcode will come populated here. This is where we are going to implement uh, the speech recognition module. So if you press this button, the speech recognizer intent should get opened up and whatever the user speaks should get converted into a text and that should come populated here. And based on that, the search results should refresh. So that is the overall aim of this, of this particular video so it's very simple actually nothing much to be done so uh, the one thing that we need to do is obviously to import the android dot speech dot recognizer intent even if you don't do that uh, once you have written the code that we are going to write you can just do a control shift o in your windows system uh, to include all the different uh, in the import files that are required now to get a complete uh, source code of this particular module, you can always visit my website www.semicolon.blogspot.in semi as in S-E-M-Y-C-O-L-O-N. Um, the link is available in the description below the video. Now, this is the piece of code where uh, we are defining the search screen where uh, the different uh, elements have been already designed and uh, if you want to understand how the search screen has been designed, please watch one of the previous videos and it has a, a good demonstration of how we have achieved that. Going back to the relevant piece of code. Now we have defined the audio button here, which is nothing but an image button and we have mapped it to the fragment view, which is the XML, sorry, the, the fragment and underscore search XML, which is nothing but the XML corresponding to this particular fragment. Now, there was no code previously for handling the on-click of uh, button audio. So what we have done now is that we have written this piece of code, which is uh, button radio dot set on click listener. And on click, what we are going to do is we are going to call the uh, recognize speech intent uh, of Google. This is a code that we need to write. So we have. Uh, basically initiated the intent and we have uh, mapped it to the intent of recognizer speech, sorry, recognizer intent, action, recognize speech. And these are some of the parameters that we are setting to the intent, uh, basically sending it as extras in the intent, which will be recognized or which will be received by the uh, new activity which will open up and uh, they will behave accordingly. So the first thing that we have done is uh, the extra language model. So there are two options available. So one is the language model freeform and the other one is language model web search. So this is nothing but the model which will be used by Google to identify whatever has been spoken by the user. The second uh, thing is uh, about the extra prompt. Now this is what will come in that small window that opens up. Uh, whatever text you, you want to be uh, written there, you can write it here. So here I had written, please start speaking. I can even write name the product you want to order and you will see that on the screen this is what will come written in that small pop-up window that opens up. Now the next parameter that we have set is extra max results. Now uh, Google not only can give you the match result it can also give you multiple match results. So the way that it operates is that if I mention here instead of one, if I mention three, what will happen is that in the results, we are going to get three different uh, options of the recognition that has happened from Google. 
So the number one will be the most preferred or the most optimum as per Google. And then you can get second and third option as well. So if required, we can set it to 10 also and Google will send us 10 possible matches for this voice recognition. And then it is up to us to implement a logic to understand which one makes more sense for us and we can accordingly uh, use it. For, for the time being here, we are only going to set it as one because we are only going to process the first or the most uh, optimum uh, result that has been given by Google. Now the next thing is about extra language. Now here we uh, are going to set the language of the speech for which recognition has to be done. Now uh, you can get a complete list of what are the languages which are supported by Google and you have to put that quote accordingly here. So right now here we are using the English language as a language of speech. And uh, then the next thing that we are doing is we are calling an activity for result uh, and we are setting the code of this particular uh, request as two because this is very important because from here we are also calling a start activity for result for the barcode class as you can see here. But uh, if we don't use the request code, we will never know uh, when we are handling it, the result on activity, um, sorry, on activity results, what exactly we are getting uh, back, which request has sent back that information. So this request goes, as you can see here, for barcode, I have kept it as one. For um, for uh, the voice to speak, uh, voice to text, we have kept it as two. So this is a part of the code which will handle the uh, click of the of that particular button and it will call the intent for the recognized speech. Now, once the speech recognition has happened, this intent is going to send back the results. So we need to write a piece of code to handle the sent back results as well. So then we move to this particular method called on activity result. On activity result was already there uh, previously that this is the part of the code which was previously there, which was handling the request uh, result which was coming in from the barcode uh, intent. And this is the part of the code which you have written to handle the speech recognition. Now, as you can see, uh, the same method will get called for both the cases, whether it's the barcode request or whether it's the speech recognition uh, request. So we need to have a logic in place to identify which request is what and then put a logic accordingly. So I had mentioned earlier that the barcode was called with the request code of one and that is the same request code which would have been passed back um, by the activity. So this is what the request code is. So I'm the first thing that I have done is I checked request request code equal to one. And this was the logic for the barcode uh, processing. And now this is the logic which we have written for the processing of uh, text to speech. So the first thing that I do is check if the request code is two because that was the request code which we had initiated the uh, intent. And then I'm creating an array list of uh, type string called results. So results is basically where I'm storing the uh, results which have come back from the conversion of speech to text. And um, I'm taking because this is an array list, uh, and we had set the max uh, max parameter as one, so only one uh, result would have been returned. So we are just taking the zeroth index of that particular array list, which is the first element in it, and we are creating another string, whereby we are replacing the uh, apostrophe with a space. Now, for example, if you pronounce Kellogg's. Uh, there is a high chance that uh, that there would be a, a apostrophe after G b before S. Now the apostrophe becomes a problem when it goes into the code because uh, it it uh, then uh, causes problems with XMLs and HTMLs. So that is why uh, if the search result returned an apostrophe, we are just replacing it by space. And once we have done that, we are setting the search view set query as the same text so that uh, here the text gets populated here okay once we have done the search and um, also we are setting the iconified by default to false which means that here this icon would all this part will always be expanded and whatever is uh, whatever has been filled up 
by uh, after the after this particular conversion has happened it will be visible here and immediately based on that this list will get refreshed so now i think we can try it out let's run this particular project yeah so it is running in the emulator yeah so as you can see that this is the this is the um, application that we have developed till now the search tab is complete but the cart and the quick order uh, are not yet done so we'll obviously put some code for that so coming back to search what i'm going to do is i'm going to press the uh, this speaker button which is here and the intent opens up do notice that here you see the name of the product you want to order this is what we had put and uh, this is what is getting displayed here i'm going to try once more kelog as you can see uh, now it has recognized kelog as a as a what what i was speaking and then based on what got entered here it went to the server and fetched all the relevant details like kelog and everything else and it got it back the search results now i can change it to something like say holdix holdix yeah so as you can see this is the product match which it could find from holdix and that is what it got back i can even say something some other product like say kisan so this is a problem see kisan as a brand has double s and this has a recognized s so if i can just add a s here you will see that the search result has changed okay now the speech to text is not very accurate because there are a lot of things which are involved here Uh, it can be a local um, diction it can be local words which you use it can be local brands so it does not always work but yes it's a good feature to have and if you look at android 5 what they have done is they have done the same implementation here as well so even if i don't do this implementation here i can always click this button here and achieve the same thing so now let's try that kelog yeah so this is where things can be slightly tricky because as you can see here um it is continuously recognizing the text and converting it into uh, and putting it in the search result so this is where the implementation might become slightly tricky and uh, obviously uh, this may not suit our purpose but it's a good feature that uh, they have implemented and uh, this is something that we can use as well going forward thank you for watching this session um, if you found this session informative don't forget to press the like button also do subscribe to this channel we are continuing with this series of sessions to develop the fully functional e-commerce application and i hope that you will find it useful please do visit semicolon.blogspot.in for the complete source code for all the sessions that we have had thank you